The Cartesian crisis is a state in which all of the things that you thought you knew for sure are less and less certain, where the processes that produce uh, knowledge, let's say, have become unreliable. The, the entities that report the uh, highest quality thinking are corrupted. And so you're left struggling to figure out what to believe. And that's a very frightening state to be in. It's not a desirable state. And so the question is, well, what, how, what are you going to confront that state with? And the answer is, well, you, you know, let's say you found yourself, let's say that somebody had dumped uh, hallucinogens in the water supply and everybody was suddenly out of their minds because there was a chemical interfering with their ability to perceive like normal. Well, you wouldn't be hopeless. You would want to start figuring out how you operate in an environment where your perceptions are not accurate. And you can do it. Um, you know, actually the, the movie, um, uh, a beautiful mind, um, about the mathematician Nash is a story about a guy who discovered that he had schizophrenia, had a brilliant mind, but had schizophrenia and learned how to distinguish between his unreliable perceptions and reality such that he could operate. He was smart enough to be able to function in an environment where his perceptions were very low quality. And in some sense, we're in that boat. And so I think that you and I are sort of developing or building out that toolkit and labeling things as we come to understand them, describing how to how to operate in such an environment and we know that in part that this is working because certain things come back to us people who meet us mention some of these things and not others and we know that the ones that they mention are things that have gotten through and maybe the ones that we never hear uh need a little reframing or rethinking so anyway that's that's where i am is building out that toolkit um did you have something you wanted to to add oh i just uh apropos our conversation earlier this morning uh, I said to you, I feel at this point like any paper that I read, I need to do some due diligence and make sure the authors are real people. Like it's it's at that level of uh, chaos and and we just can't take anything for granted. It's not, you know, in part, I think this is why people are more, ever more, people have always been, but people are ever more driven to um, want to just trust the authorities. This isn't my domain. I can't think this through for myself. I don't have enough information. Just find the talking head that makes the most sense and believe them. And uh, that can work if you have actually vetted that person by uh, being extraordinarily skeptical early on, right? And checking in repeatedly because people who were reliable become unreliable. But when you're talking about the, you know, the written word, scientific papers, especially once you're into things like social media, the chances that you're not even dealing with real people, that this might not even be work that was generated by a human being, uh, is e ever more difficult to decipher. And therefore, more and more people are just throwing their hands up in the air and saying, I can't, I, I know I can't, therefore, I'm just going to, you know, pick a course, make a decision about who to listen to. And sorry, you're not going to be able to uh, veer me from that path because it's not worth it because you are offering no alternative. Yeah, we've never needed experts more right. and had less reliable access to them. And it's not th that experts don't exist, but you cannot use any of the proxies that you would ordinarily use to identify them. Right. Um, really, the only thing that works is a uh, track record. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that is the Cartesian crisis. And okay, somebody dumps hallucinogens in your water, you've got to figure out how you're going to operate and not harm yourself in that context. If you find yourself in a hall of mirrors, right, the rules for moving in a hall of mirrors are not the same rules that exist under normal circumstances. You're going to have to realize that just because you see a reflection of yourself in one direction doesn't mean that's not the direction to move. So you're going to have to start figuring out, you know, where there's a barrier, where there's a, a passage, do you think it's cruel to put those two scenarios right next to each other? Yes, that I, was uh, ill-conceived. Really unfortunate. Yes, so you're you're right. you're now hallucinating in a hall of mirrors. That's not good. I mean, that that is what it feels like sometimes, but that's that's terror right there. Yeah, that's not uh, not a good. It's 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 better than a hall of phones, but 
nope, you can ignore the phones. Turn off your notifications, <laughs> ignore the phones. Well, maybe you can turn off the mirrors. Walk around blindly and hope you don't break anything. Right.